Up to now, I've done most of my parallelization with OpenMP. I do find it the easiest way to parallelize code, but sometimes I choose to use threaded building blocks or silk. But now we're going to be talking about mobile programming, and Android programming is almost always done in Java. It would be really nice if we could find an OpenMP version for Java. That way we would know the standard, we could adhere to it, and it would be a much easier learning curve. But there is no standard OpenMP library for Java. Uh, there have been attempts, and I found quite a few white papers and conferences on the subject. There is even a Linux-only build that you can download. The interesting thing about the Linux build is it does use the GPUs to help parallelization. So in order to parallelize our Java code, which will be used for our Android app, we need to use other means besides OpenMP. What I've done is to create an Android app for demonstration purposes. But before we do that, let's go ahead and get some benchmarks. Here I'm calling a method called do serial calculations. And here's my method, do serial calculations. Starts off with a couple of housekeeping pieces, gets the text view, it records the starting time, goes through a loop, calculating the inverse cosine for each one of these values that we're counting through and stores it in this results array. Finally, it calculates the elapsed time and stores it. And this will allow us to have a benchmark with which we can compare our parallelization. So let me go ahead and run this. And I'll open up the Android emulator. And we shall wait until the results come in. And here you can see the results. The sequential loop took 31,790 milliseconds. So we're back to our Android project. And we're going to start off by doing some fairly simple things. Um, fairly easy to understand. Step one is going to be to create a thread class, my thread class that extends thread. And the reason we want this is that we want to have a starting and an ending number. And that way we can break this array up into chunks. So the constructor for this class will take the start and end numbers. Then when the run method gets called, it will just loop through from start to end doing that same calculation we did before. Okay, now we need a method to test it. Do first parallel calculations is what we'll call it. And let me walk you through it. The first thing is I'm going to go ahead and allocate four threads. They're actually the my thread class. And you could actually have any number of threads that you wanted to. But I chose four because most computers have four processors. And this tends to give the best results. A little housekeeping. Get the text view. Record the starting time. Now here what I'm going to do in this loop, this will happen four times. What I do is I create a new thread, and this is going to give it the starting and ending numbers. And then I just call start. Pretty easy. And those threads themselves will go ahead and do the calculations as up here this run method will execute. Now, there is a little detail. If you don't call these join methods, what will happen is the threads will just go on and they won't stop and wait until they're done. This dot join for each thread is going to wait until the thread is complete before it moves on. Then we're going to record the elapsed time and put it into the text field. So let's go ahead and run this, show you the emulator and let's wait for the results and as you can see the results are significantly different the parallelization actually paid off pretty well okay back to our Android project now we're going to use a much more modern technique that Sun actually recommends okay so let's start off by creating a new class I called it calc and this is similar to that my thread class that we created which extended thread. This is going to implement the callable 
interface. And once again, we have the same start and end idea. And our constructor takes start and end, just like my thread did. But this time, instead of run, we have a call method. And call is going to do the same thing as run, except this just happens to be a different interface that we're implementing. OK, now we need a method to test it. OK, so let's take a look at this method. Do second parallel calculations. Housekeeping, get the text view, record the starting time. And this class is what's going to do all the work. First, we're going to create a list of the new classes which contain those start and end numbers. And then the executor is going to say shutdown, meaning it's going to wait for all of them to finish. That's just like the join that our thread used. Finally, we record the elapsed time and we show it in the label. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, so there you see the results. And notice the second parallel, the recommended way, um, gave us poorer results than the first parallel way, which shows me that sometimes the old methods are the better methods. So in conclusion, we've shown how you can parallelize Java code with careful planning. And while OpenMP for Java would be nice, you don't necessarily need it. And lastly, I'd like to point out that sometimes the older thread techniques will give you better performance than the new thread techniques.